Honored guests gathered here, members of the Board of Trustees, and uh, all our performing artists, uh, sponsors, collaborators, and just music lovers. Um, I extend, on behalf of the Victoria Memorial Hall, a very warm welcome, and unfortunately warm in more than one sense of the term, um, to this uh, grand occasion. The Victoria Memorial, as I think uh, most of uh, us who are gathered here know, serves multiple lives and has lived multiple lives where uh, Roman columns stand not awkwardly but rather harmoniously with uh, Mughal charokas and architectural features. Uh, so we try, perhaps our level best, to bring to our audiences uh, almost all or at least a diverse forms of cultural expression. Uh, as part of our cultural programming. So it should not come perhaps as a surprise that uh, this series of uh, French, in French collaboration, the series of Western classical music concerts comes right uh, almost back to back with uh, Sanskrit theater that we had uh, on the occasion of World Heritage Week uh, previously. Um, this uh, series uh, is an experiment we had started last year uh, on the 12th of November with the concert by Maxime Zicchini. Uh, with some fears and tribulations and trepidation, uh, whether it would be successful, but I think our fears have now been allayed, uh, or as Shakespeare would say, in the deep bosom of the ocean buried. Uh, our grand, spectacular audience here uh, tells us that we should continue with these uh, series of programs. So please join me in extending a warm welcome and a round of applause to Nicola Chatenet, Nadine Yocrasto, and Jean-Baptiste Arnaud who are our performing artists today. Uh, Nadine Yocrasto, of course, we welcome for the second time, if my memory serves me well. I would now uh, not take much longer, just request you to please turn your mobile phones or any other noise-causing device into airplane, silent, or switch-off mode, whichever is your favorite. Uh, and also to, uh, I would like to call upon the, uh, the stage, uh, Mr. Nicola Fasino, the director of the Alias Francis du Bengal, to introduce the artists as well as the concept and the whole idea of the series of five concerts that we have planned uh, this year. So please, Mr. Fasino. Mr. and Mrs. the Consul General, Mr. the Deputy Director of Victoria Memorial Hall, ladies and gentlemen, and music enthusiasts. Bonsoir, good evening. One year already, how time flies. A year ago, I stood before you to introduce the first concert of the inaugural season of the Western Classical Music Festival in Kolkata, in the enchanting sitting of the Victoria Memorial Hall. Tonight, bienvenue, welcome to the grand opening of the second season of our festival, a harmonious collaboration between Alliance Française du Bengal, the Victoria Memorial Hall, and the Consulate General of France in Kolkata. It's such a pleasure to see familiar faces and also new enthusiasts gathered here tonight. Art whether expressed through literature, painting, theater, or music, possesses a timeless essence. A piece written four centuries ago resonates through the ages with undiminished intensity, reaching a transgenerational audience through its inherent humanity. In the cultural hub of Kolkata, where the audience is very demanding and is discerning and appreciates the finer artistic nuances, it's also a motivation and a challenge to bring you tonight. The soirées hosted at the Victoria Memorial Hall transcend conventional performances. They are rendezvous, where connoisseurs unite in harmony with a timeless opus an estimated composer, and an iconic venue imbued with the virtuosity of Maestro. The combination of all of this creates a unique experience. Each musician infuses a contemporary touch into their interpretation, 
creating a unique experience for the audience. Before we delve into the intricacies of tonight's performance, let me make a moment to reflect on the success of our previous endeavors. Over the past five concerts, we have had the pleasure of hosting nearly 2,500 music enthusiasts, people who witnessed outstanding performances by French artists, including a tenor pianist, one with a left hand mastery, a violinist, an oboist, and a trio of talented female musicians, specially invited to celebrate the International Women's Day. Shedding light also on the forgotten composition of 20th century written by French female composer. It was truly a universal language voyage. Tonight, we continue this journey with a splendor of French brass. The program is a celebration of a timeless composition featuring works by Michel Richard de la Lande, Joseph Haydn, Joan Nepomuk Hummel, and Antonio Vivaldi. Allow me to introduce our distinguished artist, Nicolas Chatney. is the principal trumpet of the, opera, of the Opera National de Paris. Paris National Opera, a maestro traversing the realms of Baroque, classical, and contemporary music, as well as the enchanting world of electro, pop, techno, and Hollywood film scores. Jean-Baptiste Arnold, solo trumpet, with the Reims Orchestra Opera. Reims is a city, you know the region, is located in Champagne a versatile musician whose talents extend to orchestras, brass bands, and even collaborations with electronic production, blending classical and modern genres seamlessly. And then, the last but not least, Nadine Jocrasto, a young Steinway artist, a virtuoso pianist who has graced stages in England and India, embodying the spirit of dedication and excellence in her musical performance. De Lelland's composition will transport us tonight directly to the courts of Louis XIV, a journey through time to an era where the power of nobility was measured by the virtuosity of its trumpeter. This season, I'm trying to announce a celebration of talented artists, marking a chapter in cultural collaboration by inviting the finest musicians, like the musician tonight, but also we will celebrate the Vivaldi uh, composition in two weeks, uh, conducted by the Honorable Consul General at the same venue, but indoor, it's uh, also a testament when we uh, welcome French and Indian talented artists to the harmonious intersection of our two rich cultures. A heartfelt thank, finally, to Mr. Kumar, the director of the Victoria Memorial Hall, Mr. Didier Talpin from the, the, the Consulate General of France, and our estimate sponsor for tonight's concert, the Basu Foundation. So without further ado, let us immerse ourselves in the splendid world of French brass and revel in the harmonies that unite us across the borders. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, Mr. Fassino, for introducing the artists for today. All of them are very well accomplished as uh, as we expect from the last series and the spectacular success. Uh, Mr. Samarendra Kumar, the secretary and curator of Victoria Memorial Hall, could not join us this evening due to urgent um, appointments and engagements in New Delhi. So I would uh, not take much of your time and invite uh, His Excellency, the Consul General of France in Kolkata, Monsieur Didier Talpin, to introduce the music that we will be hearing today. <clears throat> so, a concert with two trumpets and a piano. A trumpet is, without any doubt, one of the oldest instruments ever. It was 
to be found under different shapes and designation, I would say on each and every battlefield in the past, from very antique times, and for each coronation, each entrance of a king, prince, emperor. But actually, what is a trumpet? It's indeed a very simple instrument, not simple to play, but in its conception, this is a pipe made of brass, generally, with a special mouthpiece. Until the end of the Baroque time, the Baroque time is the period where Bach, Vivaldi, Telemann, Handel, etc., were active, nothing changed. Only a few notes were possible to be played. But music is a little bit like pastry. Even if you have only a few ingredients, in our case, a few notes, if the pastry chef, the cook, is good, then it can bring to a masterpiece. It's exactly the case with Vivaldi. So the concert of tonight presents somehow the historical evolution of the trumpet through the major pieces of the repertoire for the instruments, as well as a fantastic journey over one and a half century of glorious music. After the Baroque period, which is going to be represented by De La Lande, and then the famous Vivaldi II Trumpet Concerto, we move till the end of the 18th century uh, to find a um, special instrument, let's say a first evolution. This was a key trumpet. Because the people, you know, thought, okay, the trumpet of Vivaldi, of Bach is nice, but we would like this beautiful instrument to play more songs, you know, melodies, and not only single notes here and there. And so an inventor, it was in Vienna, in the very end of the 18th century, a, a trumpeter himself, decided to put some keys on the trumpets, a little bit the same mechanism that would be invented 50 years later by Adolf Sachs for the saxophone. This is called the key, the keyed, or the trumpet with key. This instrumentalist was fortunate enough to meet two major composers of the time, Haydn and Hummel, and two of them wrote a beautiful concerto. We'll have the pleasure to listen to both of the concerto, and these two concerto are really milestones in the trumpet repertoire. Not a single audition, competition, or concert with trumpet can't be held, if I may say, without this uh, one or two of the species. But then the key trumpet was not a success. We don't know really why it disappeared. And we had to wait another 50 years with uh, the inventor I just mentioned a little bit before, Adolf Sachs, which has the idea to put what we call the uh, valves, valves on the trumpet, and here the modern trumpet was definitively established. And the last piece we'll have the pleasure to listen to, which is a polka, which is a dance, which is very representative from, for the music of the 1850s, 60s, 70s, to be played outside, uh, mostly in the spa cities, in what we call the kiosks. It was very popular in Europe. It's typically representative for uh, this kind of music and this kind of instrument. But let's stop it there, enough words, and now let the trumpets sound. Enough words and let the trumpet sound, and yet again you have words, unfortunately, sorry. Um, I would just, uh, I just entered the stage to remind you to please turn off your mobile phones and uh, let the music begin. Thank you.
Good evening. We're, uh, um, Nadine, Jean-Baptiste, and me are really thrilled, honored, and pleased to be here in this magnificent hall um, to share this musical night with you. And um, we started so with a French composer, De La Lande, who was the, the composer, the official composer of Louis, the, the King, Louis the Fourteenth, uh, in Versailles. And this composition was made for the supper. So when the king arrived in the big hall, the trumpet was sound and announced the king and you can go, you can start eating. <laughs> um, in Versailles, whatever what the king was doing, there was always music accompanying him because he wanted to be, maybe to be the first uh, to do Hollywood movies live and direct. So the composer was here to, to accompany him when he was in the garden, when he was on the boat, when he was hunting, when he was going to bed. It was very, very important to have music all the time. So now we're leaving France and we're going back to Austria and Germany to play the Haydn and Hummel concertos for trumpets not the same trumpet as did you said, the, the key trumpet. Uh, we're a bit further in time, the start of the 19th century, and uh, we're leaving the Baroque music for the end classical starting new romantic uh, music that is, was getting born in Europe. So Jean-Baptiste is gonna play the Haydn concerto, uh, Little fun fact, it, the second movement, it's in three movement, and the second movement is um, known to have the inside uh, a small uh, dedicate to the quart, uh, a string quartet, which is the, the melody of the national hymn of the Germany country. So if you know the Germany country, you will recognize the second movement starts likewise. So Jean-Baptiste starts with Haydn and I will follow with Hummel Concerto.
Vivaldi, who is, I think, the, the inventor of the classical concerto. He gave all the rules to construct a concerto. So what we played with the Haydn and Hummel concerto are uh, an, a global piece sparing three movements, two fast, the first and the third fast, and the middle is more lyrical or gentle and slow movement. So it's going to be the same with the Vivaldi trumpet concerto, double trumpet concerto. You have two for the price of one. Um, Vivaldi um, had, hadn't uh, write music much for trumpets. Trumpet was complicated to uh, write for because the, the normal, the natural trumpet were just a tube, brass tube, and you couldn't do much things or it was very difficult, physical, to play the high register. So we're lucky to have one concerto, one trumpet concerto for two trumpets. And that's what we're going to play now. We're going to play it with, uh, maybe you've seen, we've played different trumpets. Uh, we have the orchestral trumpet, which uh, we use for the concerto classical and romantic concerto. And for the Baroque repertory, it was written for the high register. We used the little sister, uh, the piccolo trumpet, which is very high. We could play higher than the normal trumpet. And we use it for Baroque music. So now, Vivaldi double concerto. Thank you. 
19th century, the trumpet has changed a lot since Vivaldi with the one tube trumpet. They had piston, and we could play a lot more music and uh, virtuous music. And that was for classical and academic music, but it was also the same for the popular mu music. So you could see in Paris alongside the, the streets, artists, trumpet players, cornet, uh, to be precise, cornet, uh, piston cornet players, playing some dancing for the, for the Paris people, and they were dancing uh, close to the musician. That was La Belle Époque, the beautiful, uh, the beautiful moment of the, of the Paris uh, history. So we're gonna play a polka, which is a dance, Polish dance, and it's called Mer les Pinsons, two birds, uh, blackbirds and finch, I guess. And they're talking to each other, they're, they're having a lot of conversation, different, different things that they're talking about life. And if you want to dance, it's allowed. They were doing the same in Paris a long time ago. So, Mère les Pinsons.
Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Um, we had a, a spare one in case of. We stay in Paris, very center of Paris, as we're gonna play a little, very little polka to same same time, Belle Epoque. Uh, it's written by Francis Poulenc and it's called the Eiffel Tower Polka. It's, if you go to Paris, you will see it's really wonderful. It's not very famous, but the Eiffel Tower is a thing. <laughs> Eiffel Tower Polka, Francis Poulenc. Thank you very much. Uh, the trumpets have spoken and so has the piano, I think, and uh, again, we don't need words right now. Uh, but I would uh, like to invite uh, Mr. Atul Prakash, uh, our Honorable Trustee of the Victoria Memorial Hall and the Accountant General A&E West Bengal uh, to felicitate the musicians. If the musicians would please come up uh, on the stage once more. I will then request uh, Mr. Manish Gupta, the security officer, Victoria Memorial Hall, to also felicitate the performers. And a small token from me.
thank you for this absolutely stunning performance. Uh, much doesn't remain to be said anymore. Uh, we see you again, of course, uh, in a few days. So as uh, we were saying in the beginning, this is a series of five concerts that we have planned all through December all the way up to March. Uh, we do not wait till the next month to see you again. So we hope we see you again. On the 18th of December, when we move indoors, hopefully it'll be a little more cold, uh, which it should be, uh, for chamber music, if I'm not very wrong, uh, conducted by the Honorable Consul General, Mr. Didier Talpin. Uh, so we meet again in less than, in about 14 days time. Uh, till then, good night. And if there are any final words from the Alias Francaise or the uh, Consul General, then good night for now. Thank you.